the biggest religion of the Republic of Bene, Voodoo, has over 50 million believers in West Africa and further huge followings in parts of the Caribbean. An animistic religion whose roots stretch back thousands of years. Its name means God, spirit or power in the fun language. And its followers believe not in the cliches of the living dead, but instead in the power of nature, natural forces that cause through everything. Fascinating as all of this is to watch on screens, what you really want to do is get out there and see it for yourself. But where are the best places to witness the voodoo culture in Bene? And how will you know what it is you are actually witnessing? Sacrifices are all that most of us know of voodoo, and yes, they are an everyday occurrence in Bene. Although you may look on them as nothing but an exciting picture opportunity, they are in fact extremely important event of vital symbolism. The giving up of something valuable or precious is the surest way to catch in a God's ear. Chickens and goats are in the most frequently sacrificed creatures. Though, you may see your fair share of cute puppies and kittens meet their makers as well. It might not financially seem like a lot to you or me. But for the vast majority of African village families, a chicken is a significant sacrifice. The thing most of us immediately associate with voodoo is people in a trance, eyes rolled back into their heads, speaking incomprehensible languages with their bodies possessed by spirits or gods. It certainly makes for an arresting sight. However, there is a lot more to it than that. Trance is brought on in voodoo ceremonies through the beats of drums and other musical instruments playing repetitively over and over again until finally the god or spirit is summoned and enters into a human body. Once he has occupied his human shell, it is not at all unusual for the spirit to have a bit of fun with his new toy and make the body dance in a manic fashion for hours on end and make it cut or injure itself. Magic. For most people, this is the most fascinating side of voodoo or any other traditional African culture. Magic forms an enormous part of daily Beninese life and is likely to be your enduring memory of the country. At times, you could be forgiven for thinking that everyone you meet is a magician, but this is no frivolous pulling white rabbit out of heart type of magic. 
Beninese magic is of religious significance and is also used for healing. Although, as gods are requested to help in such operations, it is very much intertwined with religious beliefs. Maybe most importantly, magic helps to explain those tricky patches between the unknown human world and the unknown and often bizarre world of ghosts and gods. Because of this, most religious figures are in some way or another gifted with magical powers that can be used for both good and bad purposes. Magic is most commonly used as a way of communicating with spirits in order to ask for help in the protection or curing of a person. Believers usually put on amulets, charms, incisions and mangled up animal parts of the fetish market. The priests of Voodoo are like the priests of Christianity or the Mullah of Islam. Ritual leaders who oversee religious matters and ceremonies. They can be men or women, but men predominate. People become priests through either vocation or training. Some are even called by the gods at birth. Others have their future revealed to them by being possessed by a spirit, while some just go off to train into the job. Egungun's are a type of Yoruba ancestor veneration, and an Egungun is the most frequently seen spirit in Bene. Your chance of an encounter is quite high. Coming back from the realm of the dead as a ghost is one thing, apparently not that hard, but coming back in a physical form in which you can touch and talk to as a living human is another thing altogether, and only really likely if the spirit takes on the form of an Egungun. Not surprisingly, the whole experience of meeting an Egungun is slightly spooky and stressful for most foreigners and Beninese alike. Many people actually try to hide or run away from them, particularly as some Egunguns can be very, very violent. The more violent Egungus called Agbano can be differentiated from the Melua ones called Weduto by having some kind of impressive structure on their heads. Zangbeto almost as common as the Egungu and increasingly easy to see due to their habit of putting on public performances during celebrations or even paid for tourist events. The Zangbeto or night watchmen act as an unofficial police patrolling the streets. Owing to the secrecy surrounding the Zangbeto society, it is hard to know what exactly is inside a Zangbeto. Most people actually assume that there is simply a person in a trance within one and quite possibly that is often the case. These appear to come in all manner of shapes and forms. I have seen Zangbetos which are in miniature or only knee high and another with massive moving penis.
You will be pleased to know that witches are very common in Bene and you have a fairly good chance of meeting one. You will however be disappointed to learn that Beninese witches do not go in for the cliché buzzing about in broomsticks very much. Though you may well meet one, hmm, it is really best to try to avoid them because witchcraft is considered one of the biggest forms of misfortune in Bene and witches are feared, loathed and respected. Voodoo is a deeply rooted yet severely misunderstood religion. 